the presence of the Lord into this house this morning. I know others will be coming in and joining us momentarily. But how many of you just want to be in the presence of Jesus today? Amen. I got up this morning just thinking about that one basic concept and texting some pastor friends of mine praying over their churches this morning. Anywhere Jesus was in the Gospels, everything changed. All that was necessary was for Jesus to be there. We can try to sing this morning. We can try to preach. But if Jesus will just show up at PFA today, your life and mine will be changed. Amen. Father, we invite you into this house right now. We love you, Lord, this morning. We, get, we give you glory. We thank you for all of your blessings in our life, Lord. The greatest of which is the presence of God that we get to enjoy. So right here, right now, in this place, for the next few moments, may the presence of Jehovah envelop this house, Lord. Lord, may we have an encounter like Isaiah did in Isaiah chapter 6, where he saw the Lord high and lifted up. Fill this place with your train today, God. And we give you praise and thanksgiving for the great things that you will do for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're able, remain standing with us this morning and let's worship the Lord today.
Jesus for 
person standing next to you this morning came to church with, do you? Even if you're married to them, you don't know everything that's going on in their mind, in their heart, in their spirit, in their soul. Somebody you're sitting next to or standing next to this morning might really need a touch from Jesus right now. Why don't you lay your hand on their shoulder right now? As they sing that again, take them by the hand, lay your hand on their shoulder. Just begin to speak the name of Jesus over them this morning. Come on, ladies, help me this morning. Just begin to speak the name of Jesus over them. Lord, I speak the name of Jesus over my son. I speak the name of Jesus over my daughter. I speak the name of Jesus over my husband, over my wife, over my friend that's sitting next to me this morning. You don't know what they're facing. Come on, Kim, sing it again this morning. Say the, Say the name. 
So all you got to say, you don't have to know what they're going through. You don't have to know what to pray for them this morning. Just say the name of Jesus over them while you're touching them this morning. Lord, let there be a peace that overwhelms this congregation today. Let there be the joy of the Lord that is their strength this morning. We speak the name of Jesus over one another right now. Let there be a calming in each other's minds today. Take away every fear. Take away every worry. Take away every doubt. Take away every depression. Take away every stress. Take away every anxiety. We speak Jesus over it all right here this morning. We speak Jesus over our children today. Living in a world that's trying to take this next generation away from God. We speak Jesus over our children this morning. We speak Jesus over our grandchildren this morning. We speak Jesus over our husbands and our wives and our marriages this morning. Hallelujah. We speak Jesus over our church this morning. scanning this congregation right now and I'm seeing tears rolling down at cheeks right now I'm seeing people that are seeking the Lord in their life this may not be for everybody that's all right if you don't need a touch from Jesus this morning that's okay but somebody needs a touch from the Lord right now we're not moving any further right now if you need a touch from the Lord you better step out and get to this altar this morning some of you are in desperate need of a touch from Jesus today. And it's not just our Teen Challenge, ladies. I'm looking over my church this morning. Some of you are in need of a touch from Jesus right now. There's a story in the Bible, and I often allude to it at a time like this, where the angel at a time would step down into the pool of Bethesda, and he would begin to stir the waters. And if anyone stepped into that pool when the angel was stirring the waters, that person would be healed. There's a stirring of the waters right now at Pensacola First Assembly of God. I want all my church to stand with me this morning. If you're physically able to, I want you to stand up with me right now. The Lord wants to touch you today in this house. The Lord wants to minister. If you need healing in your body, if you need comfort in your soul, whatever your need is today, Jesus wants to meet you down here right now. You say, Pastor, I don't have to go to the altar to be touched by the Lord. You're exactly right. You don't. The Lord can touch you right where you are. But there's an anointing and an atmosphere that's up here. And I don't know if you're feeling it all the way around this church the way I'm feeling it up here right now. I'm encouraging you this morning that if you need a touch from Jesus in your life to make a move to the Lord, draw near to God and He will draw near to you, the Word of God says this morning. Sing it again, Sister Kim. Say the name of Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. Oh, say the name so precious. For there's no
this with me right now. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. and glorify the name of Jesus. We love you today, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for meeting us in this place. Thank you for ministering to those that had a need this morning. Hallelujah. Would you give the Lord a great big hand of praise today as you're seated? You're ready for the word of God this morning. Amen. I want to continue our Sunday morning series and begin what's probably going to take me a few Sundays to uh, teach on this subject of we believe in giving. I knew that this is the direction that the Lord wanted me to go in the last few weeks was confirmed to me. Uh, this past week in a conversation I was having with someone here in our church as well. And very little of what I'm going to teach and preach has anything to do with financially giving. So don't get scared. Don't get nervous. Don't get worried. Don't get up and leave. I'm not even going to get to finances today. But it is going to be a blessing to us, I believe. As I was seeking the Lord uh, this past week for what direction to go in, I knew that this was the right direction, but I didn't really know what the Lord wanted me to deal with. Friday morning, sitting on my porch, drinking coffee and seeking the Lord, studying the Word, the Holy Spirit just poured into me enough uh, material. It's going to take several weeks to teach on this, to preach on this. We believe in giving. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, I thank you for your presence in the house today. I thank you for this church. I thank you for the people in this church. 
I thank you, Lord, that they're here at church this morning. And I ask you to bless them powerfully and immensely for coming to the house of God today. I know, Lord, that you have already blessed many, but I believe that you want to use your word to bless us today as well, to challenge us, to change us, to convict us, and to make us more of what you want us to be as Christians. Now, God, I pray, even as I preached last Sunday, that you would give us an open heaven above us so that we may hear the word of the Lord today. And I pray for fresh anointing upon the preacher and upon the word that's being preached and upon the ears that are hearing. And as I mentioned last Sunday in my message, we believe in preaching. I pray, God, that you would prepare the ground of our hearts to be fertile ground right now for the seed of the word to be planted in. Pull out the thorns, Lord. Pour out the rocky places. Make it a good, fertile bed for the seed of God, the word of God to be planted, that it may bear fruit for the glory of God in due season. I pray over our children right now in Children's Church that you would anoint Jenny and help her as she teaches them the word of God and that you would hide your word in their hearts, as the Bible says, that they may walk with you and not sin against you as they grow older. But let there be a firm foundation in their hearts today from the word of God. And I thank you for it. Lord, before I close in prayer, I just want to pray over everyone right now that's going to be watching this message next week online. I pray for those that are viewing our services online that don't have the opportunity to come be in this house with us, perhaps for physical impairment reasons, or they may live in another place, but they're watching the services of Pensacola First Assembly of God. I pray, Lord, that the presence of God that we feel in this house would enter into their cars, enter into their living rooms, enter into their bedrooms, their offices, wherever they may be watching and listening to the word of God and bless them immensely. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Let me begin this morning as I start this series of We Believe in Giving. I'm probably not going to make it past this one point this morning, but we have an example for giving. Amen. His name is God. First of all, let me point out to you that our Father gave us His Son. You can't teach on giving. You can't preach on giving without quoting the all too familiar passage of Scripture, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For evangelistic purposes this morning, I must point out to you that the word believe, as I taught this past Wednesday as we started John chapter 1, that the word believe does not just simply to mean that we believe that Jesus is, but the word believe literally means to become a follower of, to become committed to, to become obedient to the teaching and the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you've put your faith in Jesus and you've become obedient to the teaching of the Lord, thank God you've been given freely the gift of eternal life. Aren't you thankful for that this morning? Hallelujah. God, the Father, would give us his only begotten Son. The scripture says in John chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 that in the beginning was the word. And I pointed out this past Wednesday that the word, the words uh, summarize, words exemplify, words express the feelings and the desires and the intents and the emotions of the heart of what someone believes and yearns for in their innermost being. And John says that Jesus was the word. He embodied the emotions, the character, the attributes of God. Colossians says that he is the fullness of the Godhead in a bodily form. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. 
and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. When you think about that, and you don't just read across John 3, 16, and you don't just read across John chapter 1, as we're so prone to do in our time of daily Bible reading, because we've read it so often before, but when you begin to look at it, and when you begin to consider it, and when you begin to meditate on the gravity and the weight of what John is describing to us that there's a relationship between the word Jesus and God the Father that has always been before time was there they were together always in unity with one another and when you think about the relationship that they had that they would part from one another in a physical way for a few years in order that you and I might have eternal life through the gift of Jesus Christ that's amazing to me. It's astounding to me. That's a giving like none other. A self-sacrificing giving when you think about it that way. So God the Father has given to us his son. Jesus has given to us himself. When you think about God being our example of giving, that his giving would cost him very much, that his giving would be something of such a magnitude that it would cause him to suffer and bleed and die. I've explained at Easter time, and, and I won't go through it this morning for the sake of time, but I've explained it. Easter in detail all that took place in the flogging of Jesus and in the crucifixion of Jesus and I explained the science science behind it and the medicine behind it of how Jesus suffered and how Jesus died if you weren't here on Easter Sunday I would encourage you to go back and listen to watch that message on our YouTube channel but when you think about all of the suffering that Jesus endured that's a giving like none other that it would actually cost Jesus something of great importance his own health his own his own well-being his own feeling and we get we get all bent out of shape at times because as we give to others or as we give to the church or as we give to missionaries or we give to missions or we give to whatever it may be that we're giving to it's a strain on us at times financially but it has not cost us what it cost Jesus to give us us himself we've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit the Bible says in Luke chapter number 11 verses 9 through 13 and I say unto you ask and it shall be given you seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you now as we read this passage of scripture together I want you to imagine us climbing a hill together and at the very top at the pinnacle is the climax of what Luke is leading us to but here we're at the bottom of the hill and we're starting to climb and the Lord says I want to bless you and I want to pour out blessings upon you and I want to give good gifts to you so come to me have fellowship with me have relationship with me ask and I shall give I, it will be given to you seek me it shall you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that ask receives and he that seeks finds and to him that knocks it shall be open and now we're climbing up the hill a little bit more and Luke is beginning to bring us to the pinnacle a little bit closer and he begins to say for everyone that excuse me if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father will he give him a stone or if he ask for a fish will he for a fish give him a serpent or if he shall ask for an egg will he offer him a scorpion and so Luke is bringing us a little bit closer to the pinnacle of the mountain think about it for just a moment how much you love your children how much you love your grandchildren your great grandchildren if they ask something of you that is healthy and of nourishment are you going to give them something that's dangerous and painful absolutely not because you love them right 
the scripture says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, the word evil there is signifying of an evil nature. If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give? Oh, and now we're starting to get very close to the pinnacle of the mountain. At the base of the mountain, Luke says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. But what is it that I'm asking for? And what is it that I'm seeking? And what is it that I'm standing at the door and knocking for? He's encouraging us at the pinnacle of the mountain to seek our Father for the person of the Holy Spirit. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? See, the desire and the heartbeat of God is not just to meet my physical needs and it's not just to meet my emotional needs and it's not just to meet my mental needs and God, I need to pay my bills this week and I don't know how I'm going to do it. God cares about that and God's able to intervene in your life and make a way where there seems to be no way. God, I'm burdened and I'm, I'm with the cares of life and I'm weighed down and I'm stressed and I'm fearful like the song that we sang this morning and I've got anxiety in my life. God cares about that. And God, God's able to bless you. And God's able to help you. And God's able to comfort you. And God's able to heal you. But the ultimate desire of God is to give you of Himself. He wants you to seek for more of Him. He wants you to be filled with the person of the Holy Spirit. He wants to give. He wants to give. How can I say this any better? He wants to freely just throw the Holy Ghost on you. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 through 19. Oh, Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus. And he says, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Oh, that he would grant you. I think another word for grant there, that he would give you according to the riches of his glory. Now, when we think of the word riches, the first thing that automatically comes to our imagination is money, jewels, gold, silver, platinum. But that's not the way that God sees it. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. How so? With what, Pastor? Oh, Paul describes it for us in great detail. That we might be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So that we're not having to go Sunday to Sunday and we oh, I got to get to church again so that I can get a refreshing again and so that I can get built up again. Oh, you come into this house and I hope you're refreshed and I hope you're edified and I hope you're encouraged and I hope you're built up. But you don't have to wait to get back to church to be built up and to be encouraged. But the Lord's saying on Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday, I want to freely give of my spirit so that you're strengthened with might on the inside and nothing can pull you down. God help us to where we're not having to do it all again on Sunday. Brother Mike, I heard you talk about that years and years and years ago. We can't, we can't get past, we can't get to point B because every Sunday we're having to reiterate point A over and over and over and over and over. God, help us to move past point A and to get to point B and to point Z and to point D and to point T and to point U and to make it all the way through of what God wants us to be. Strengthened with might by His Spirit. I don't. I, I. I need a visual illustration. I, 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 it's as if God's just hey, hey, I'm ready. I got all the riches right here. Here's the Capital One credit card with no balance. No, what do you call it? Huh? Huh? Everybody's saying it all once. I don't know what you're saying. There's no interest. What else? There's no. Huh? No limit. There's no, there's no limit. I'm just, I'm, Fred, you get this because I don't trust anybody else. <laughs> there's no, 
There's no limit. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on, just ask me. Just seek me today. Just stand at the door and knock. You don't have to be a victim. You can be a victor. You don't have to be overcome. You can be an overcomer. Come on, come on, come on. Ask me, Fred. Come on, ask me, Fred. Give it to me. Here you go there. Freely, freely. Oh, my goodness. God is standing over us at Pensacola First Assembly of God today. And he's saying, I don't want you to just come to church and have church as normal. I'm ready to toss my spirit into the midst of you. Freely, I want to give. Fred, you make sure you see me after church. (laughs) Strengthened with might. By his spirit in the inner man. Oh, but he doesn't stop there. Paul goes on. And he says, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Oh, and that you would be rooted and grounded in the love of God. Unmovable. Planted like a tree next to living rivers of water. That you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Oh, and that you might know the love of Christ for you, which passes all knowing. Oh, and then Paul's been bringing us on a trip up a mountain just like Luke was. Oh, and now he brings us to the pinnacle. And that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. God, filled, somebody say filled, with all, say all, fullness, say fullness, of God, say God, filled, filled, there's no room for anything else, there's no room, my There's no room for struggles. There's no room for sin. There's no room for doubt. There's no room for fear. There's no room for worry because I'm filled with all the fullness of God. How do you take God and fill me with all his fullness? You give me the gift of the Holy Ghost. God gives us of himself. He gave us his son, Jesus. Gave us himself as a sacrifice. God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the gift of himself. John chapter 14 and verse 16, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it doesn't see him, neither knows him, but you know him. Why? How? Because he dwells with you, but there's coming a day he's going to dwell within you. Thank God for Pentecost. Holy Spirit gives us freely of himself. John 14, 26, but the comforter who is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Spirit desires to talk with you, desires to comfort you, desires to minister to you and give of himself freely to you. Aren't you thankful this morning for the Holy Spirit? God gives us his Greek word agape. Oh, yeah, if you've been in church any amount of time, you've heard somebody teach on agape and phileo love and the different loves, different four types of love in the Greek language written and found in the New Testament. His agape, what is, what is agape? It's found in Romans 5 and 8, but God commendeth his agape, his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, 
Christ died for us. What is agape, pastor? Agape is a love without any reason except it's the nature of God. I, when I fell in love with Crystal over 15 years ago, I fell in love with her because she was sweet and kind and beautiful and smart and wise. And I fell in love with her because of her attributes. That's not agape love. She had something to offer me, to fulfill me, to complete me. No, no, that's not agape. But when God, but when God says to the lowest and the dirtiest and the most unclean sinner that there is, when he says to Paul, who's been a murderer and someone who's tried to stop the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but when God can still say, Paul, I love you, that's agape. You didn't do anything to earn it. You didn't do anything to deserve it. You can't do anything to keep it. That's agape. And God gives us freely his agape. Aren't you thankful this morning that you didn't have to get all washed up and get all bathed up and get all perfumed up and coloned up and get all dressed up to come into the presence of God when you got saved? Aren't you thankful that there was the agape love of God there waiting for you and embracing you and ministering to you while you were still a sinner? Hallelujah. Agape. Oh, I got to sit here for a little bit. I got to sit here for a little bit. Because in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14, Paul writes that we have been given all spiritual blessings. What are they? Oh, Paul writes and says, blessed be the God of and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all. Somebody say all. He hasn't withheld anything from us. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places when we're in Christ Jesus. What are they? Paul begins to explain, says, according as he hath chosen us. The first spiritual blessing is being chosen by God. Oh, aren't you thankful that you didn't do anything so bad he wasn't willing to forgive you for it? I heard two or three people admit they were sinners one time. Aren't you thankful this morning that you didn't do anything so bad, so wrong, you didn't run so far from God that his agape wasn't there waiting for you and he wasn't willing to forgive you? Aren't you thankful for that this morning? He chose you. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. There's the second spiritual blessing. The word holy means to be set apart for the God. Hallelujah. You're holy this morning. You may not feel holy. You may not think you're holy. But if you've been washed by the blood of Jesus, you've been set apart for God. And without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the, here's the third spiritual blessing, the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. You who had no father has a father. According to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his, here's our fourth spiritual blessing, grace. What is grace being given what I don't deserve. Wherein he hath made us, here's our fifth spiritual blessing, accepted in the beloved. You, you are accepted in that which is holy this morning, which is the church of Jesus Christ. In whom we have, here's our sixth spiritual blessing, redemption, hallelujah, through his blood. 
Oh, we've been made right with God. And our seventh spiritual blessing, the forgiveness of sins. Oh, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded towards us. And here's our ninth spiritual blessing in all wisdom and prudence. You know what he did? He led us in on his eternal secrets of salvation and the mysteries of his will. Having made known unto us the, there it is, mystery of his will. According to his good pleasure with he hath purpose in himself. Our tenth spiritual blessing that in the dispensation of the fullness of times. He might gather together in one all things in Christ. We're going to heaven one day. Hallelujah. Both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him in whom also, oh, here's our 11th spiritual blessing. We have obtained an inheritance. You know what that means? What his is mine. What his is mine. I'm going to tell you something, church. If we could really get a hold of this, we wouldn't walk around looking like we're defeated all the time. We wouldn't walk around being defeated all the time. We wouldn't have to wait, Brother Mike, to get back to Sunday to get built back up again because we're still good to go on Monday. Being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Oh, here's our 12th spiritual blessing. And that we should be to the praise of his Glory! I put an insert in my scripture right there on my iPad in bold and with three exclamation marks. Wow. That we should be to the praise of his glory. That God who is holy and righteous and pure from the foundations of when time did not even exist. That he would invite us in to be to the praise of his glory. You've got a right to worship the Lord today because you've been given that right. <clears throat> Y'all with me this morning? Who first trusted in Christ, in whom you are trusted. After that, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believe. Here's our last spiritual blessing that Paul points out in this particular passage of Scripture. And you were sealed. You were stamped. You are branded with that Holy Spirit of promise who is the earnest of our inheritance. You know what the earnest of our inheritance means? He's just the down, he's just the down payment of what is about to come. He's the, he's the earnest. When you buy a house, you have to put down, or at least in today's market, because there's so many people buying trying to get your house when you put it on the market, you have to put down what's called earnest money. And if you break the contract, you don't get your earnest money back. And God's saying, I got some things in store for you that it would tickle your toes if I told you about it right now. But I can't share it with you and I can't show it to you. But here's a little earnest money. Here's a little down payment and his name is the Holy Ghost. And until you get up here and you behold things that eye has not seen and ear has not heard, neither has entered into the imagination of man until you get to see those things, I'm just going to give you the down payment called the Holy Ghost. And he's going to walk with you and talk with you and abide with you and minister to you and comfort you and give you whatever that you have need of. Woo. Mm. Do you feel it back there, Brother Mike? I don't know. If y'all can possibly feel it like I'm feeling it right now because I'm the only one sweating in the house. <laughs> My socks are getting drenched. <laughs> I think about a, I think about a cow. My friend was out of town the other week on vacation, and I went. I took care of his cows, put, put hay out in the field, and checked their water and everything. And as, a, as Aubrey and I would ride around the field, look at the cows and everything, got a yellow tag in all the earlobe. Yeah, well, they may not have an earlobe, but the ear. You know what he's saying? In case I missed it while I was supposed to be riding the property line and making sure no trees fell on the fence. 
in case a fence fell over and the cows got out, everybody in that area knows who those cows belong to because they've been tagged. Oh, you ain't getting anything I'm saying this, but they've been tagged. They've been branded. You know what it is when Satan, the accuser of the brethren, comes to the Lord and begins to accuse you of all the things that you used to do and the places you used to go and the things you used to say and the things you used to see and all the needles you used to put in your arm and the bottle you used to turn up in your mouth. You know what the Lord says? There's a brand on him. The Holy Ghost is in him. So devil, shut your mouth. He's mine. He's mine. He's mine. Hallelujah. I told you you ain't feeling what I'm feeling this morning. Paul ain't done though. Scripture ain't done. That's not all that we've been given of spiritual blessings in heavenly places. No, no. In this passage of Scripture, the, do- the, the doctrine of redemption and reconciliation and justification and glorification and sanctification and salvation and atonement and adoption and the best part of it all, eternal life are given to us. But that's not all. No, no, that's not all. Y'all think I'm crazy this morning. I am. No, no. Romans 14, verse 17. Romans 14, 17. Aren't y'all thankful for us up there? Yeah, he's the hidden blessing of the church. For the kingdom of God is... These three things, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You can, you, can, you can bring it all down to those three things. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. What is righteousness? The ability to do and be like God. I didn't say perfect. I said righteous. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, the New King James Version says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but now you've been washed, you've been sanctified, you've been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. You know what that says? You've been made righteous. Romans 13 and 14, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. All that we need to live righteously has already been provided for us. I must simply make the choice each day to walk in what's already been given. Peace. John 14 and 27 in the Amplified Bible Classic says, Peace I leave with you. My my own peace. We ain't talking about your mama's peace or your grandmama's peace or your pastor's peace. We're talking about God's peace. My peace. I now get the peace that Jesus walked with. The same peace that while he's in the garden of Gethsemane and there's a stirring inside of his flesh saying, Lord, if it be possible, take this cup away from me. But then there's a peace that overwhelms him and says, nevertheless, not my will be done, but thy will be done. And the same peace that he was able to hang on the cross with and say, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. That same peace is yours. My peace. I now give and bequeath to you. And it's not as the world gives it do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. In other words, stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Because Jesus is saying the same peace that I had 
it's yours. Then there's the joy of the Lord. John 15 and 11, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy, I like the word for joy as being delight. My delight might remain in you and that your joy may be full. Come help me, Sister Kim, please. That your joy might be Full. Somebody say full. Not halfway. Not just on Sunday. But all day, every day, even when my circumstances are that have got me drugged down, but my joy, my delight, my delight is full. John chapter 15 and 11. Excuse me, I just read that. John chapter 15 verses 1 through 10 give us the explanation as to how we can have and remain in this full joy. Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have already spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they're burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Now couple that please with what Luke taught us. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. So continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. You know what Jesus is saying to me? I've got everything that's necessary for you. And I want to freely give it to you. And the only thing you have to do is to abide in me. Stand with me all over the house if you're able to this morning. In light of this message, let it make you just want to praise Jesus a little bit. In light of all that he has, watch this, freely given to you. Doesn't it make you want to praise Jesus a little bit? When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the other. worshiping right now. He's freely given all things to us, church. He freely gave us salvation, forgiveness, redemption, reconciliation. He's glorified you. He's justified you. He's cleansed you. He's made you what you are today. Can't we just worship him for a moment? With the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around. How He placed my feet, hallelujah, on solid ground. Oh, it makes me want to shout. Jesus. 
thankful this morning for the free gift of the body of Jesus. Let's take of the bread remembering what he has done for us today. you're going to return the victorious king Jesus we worship you today Jesus we thank you for your free gifts of salvation and forgiveness and healing we remember today that you have done alone all that is needed for those things in our life and we say thank you Jesus Will you sing it again, Sister Kim? Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. Brought me from the darkness to glory. Jesus. 
right now, Lord, that this week they will remember the free gifts given to them, that they might be able to walk in victory and be overcomers. Bless them, Lord, with your presence in their lives, strengthening them by the work of the Holy Spirit on the inner man, inner woman. We thank you for it. We love you, Lord. Thank you for our time together today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Come back on Wednesday if you can. Gospel of John. Please put your cups in the receptacles on your way out today.